Please join me in giving a GGC Grizzly welcome to Mr. Sunjay Barak. Uh, thank you, President Prochevsky, uh, faculty and staff, honored guests, family and friends, and most of all, class of 2016. There you go. Good cheer. You know, a little over 20 years ago, I was sitting in a similar room, in a similar seat as all of you. I was graduating from college and daydreaming about what was going to happen next. And there was some commencement speaker that was droning on, and I don't really remember who they were or what they said. And all the, wonder, all the while, I was wondering how long this guy was going to keep talking and keep me from getting my diploma. <laughs> and so now here I am as your commencement speaker. And hopefully, as you daydream, I'll give you some things to, to think about And as I tell you a little bit of my story uh, after I got out of college. So, as President Prochevsky said, uh, coming out of college, I ended up starting a company uh, called Digital Envoy. One night, I was at home, and I hit two websites. And these sites asked me what country I was in before they showed me any content. This was in 1999, and I was 24 years old. And I thought this was dumb. When we go to the store, we don't tell them that we're going to use English and dollars to transact business with them. Why would we do this on the internet? So that night, I came up with a way to solve that problem. And soon after, I got a couple of co-founders, and we started a company. Now again, I was 24. I was actually a week away from my 25th birthday when I came up with this idea. Not probably much older than many of you, maybe younger than some of you. And I never started a company before, and my co-founders had never started a company before. We'd never raised money before. We'd never done a lot of things before. But we went down this path. And almost immediately, we raised a little bit of money. And then soon, at the end of 99, beginning of 2000, we raised about a million and a half dollars in funding. And that's when I took the leap. I became the first employee of my company. Soon after, though, we found out that there was a competitor that was much larger than us out on the West Coast. They had raised $10 million to our million and a half. And they were founded by people that had already done these kinds of companies before. And at one point, they came to us, came to us here in Atlanta, and said, you know what? Um, either you're going to join us, and we're going to buy out your company, or we're going to crush you. Now, you know, being a Southerner, that's not really the way we like to talk to one another. And so me and my co-founders after that meeting, we talked about it. And it only took us like five minutes to say, no, nah, we're going to do this on our own. It doesn't matter that they've done it before. It doesn't matter that they have more money than us. We're going to go out, and we're going to crush them. And that's all there is to it. So later on that year, we decided it was time for us to start raising money. And they were out there getting customers. We were out there getting customers. And we said, OK, now it's time to raise a real round of money. And we decided to go out and raise 3 to $5 million. Now again, at this point, I'm 25 years old. I've never raised any kind of money, let alone millions of dollars of money. So we go out and we start talking to investors uh, and start trying to figure out who might want to invest in our company. In the beginning of 2001, we have a couple of investors that are willing to invest in our company. And so we sign an initial deal and start doing due diligence with them. And so if you don't know, due diligence is where they start looking at your company and making sure that the things that you told them are the things that are actually true. And about a month into this, they call us up and say, look, we haven't actually found anything wrong with your company. We just don't have any more money. And in that relationship, money is pretty much the most important thing. If you don't have that, you don't have a deal. And so me and my co-founders, again, we sat down, and we had a little pity party for about 20, 30 minutes. Because we had a bunch of employees outside, and honestly, we were running low on cash. So low, in fact, that at one point, a couple of weeks after this, we as co-founders could not have our checks, our paychecks direct deposited because there wasn't enough money in the bank. We had to get live checks and wait until everybody else, their checks cash, were cash to make sure there was enough money to pay us. And at the end of the day, we ended up getting another deal, and we ended up raising $10.5 million, way more than we had anticipated from our 3 to $5 million. 
And we signed that deal and we closed that deal. And then a few months later, 9-11 happened. And if you were involved in the Atlanta startup community back then, you know that probably for the better part of a year, nobody got funded. And all of that stuff that happened was probably the biggest blessing in disguise. We never had to raise money again. We continued forward. And eventually in 2007, our company was sold for way more than the amount of money that we raised. And by the way, that competitor out there, they sold for less money than they raised. So it's not really about the amount of money that you take, it's what you do with it. So this story really isn't about the experience of going through this. I really try to take away four big lessons from this experience that I had. The first one is perseverance. And obviously, all of you have done that, experienced that, and gotten through that. And it sounds like you went through that with parking. Uh, and that was probably the biggest thing that you had to persevere through. But perseverance as you go forward in life is probably one of the biggest things that you can rely on. Because you really don't fail until you decide that you're going to quit. We've seen so many companies, and you hear about com you, sometimes you don't hear about companies because their founders, their teams did not persevere. And then later on, you hear about somebody else doing the exact same thing and succeeding. A lot of times we don't know how to get through these things, but if we persevere, we'll figure out a way. You all are very smart, obviously. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been, be here right now. So as you face life, as you face challenges, make sure you persevere through those things. The second big lesson, and I see this all the time, is fear. And probably a lot of you had some fear, some trepidation when you started down this process. And there's actually a line in a book that I always think about. If you've ever read Frank Herbert's Dune, um, it's a great book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Uh, there's a movie from 1984, uh, Dune. It's, it's pretty good. The book is better. Uh, but there's an incantation there called the Litany of Fear. And I'll, I'll just tell you the first two lines. The first two lines are, I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And I think probably all of you have experienced that before. When you get fearful, when you get worried about something, you can't think about anything else. You can't think about a path through the problem that you're, you're facing, right? It's hard to persevere when you can't figure out what to do next. But that's why you have to push that fear down. You gotta take whatever's coming at you and make sure, and, and realize that you can get through whatever it is. Don't be afraid of doing whatever's in front of you. The third is luck. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you can't, you can't create luck. Uh, luck is just something that happens to you. And, and I argue with that a little bit. I think by the fact that you have done these great things, I think that you have graduated, you have increased your opportunity to accept luck. You know, you think about yourselves four years ago or, or more ago, probably the opportunities that are in front of you now are different than they would have been back then. You've increased your opportunity for luck. Me personally, you know, when these great folks at GGC asked me to come and be your commencement speaker, I have never been a commencement speaker before. It probably shows, maybe a little bit. Okay, there was no laughs there. It definitely shows quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> but I said yes right away because you never know what's going to happen. And if you say no to opportunities, then luck can never come and reach you. So always think about that. Always think about the new opportunities that you can, you can do and, and the things that you can do. And then finally, having fun. I have had fun ever since I quit my first job and went full time into my startup. There has not been a day where I have not enjoyed what I do. And it doesn't matter if you're gonna be an entrepreneur or if you're gonna go work somewhere, make sure you're having fun. We have all seen those people and we've all interacted with those people that don't have fun with where, whatever they're doing. And it's an unpleasant experience for all the rest of us because they're honestly, they're not good at their jobs because they don't enjoy what they do. But then, when you hit that person that really loves what they do, that's excited, man, it really lifts you up. It makes you excited for the day and makes you happy. Life is short. Make sure you have fun. And if you're not having fun in what you're doing, you need to move on, because everybody around you realizes you're not enjoying what you do. There's a place for all of you, and there's something that all of you can do and all of you will be good at. But make sure that you realize when it's time for you to move on. Now, today is a celebration, and it's, it's not just for you. Uh, it's for the friends and family that are up there in the stands, and it's actually for all the rest of us, too. Because we all know that now that you've graduated, you are going to go on and do great things. 
You're going to make a difference in the world, and you're going to make all of us proud. And that's what we need you to do. We need you to go out there and look at the problems in the world and not be satisfied with the way things are and think about the way things that you want them to be. Go out and change the world. We are all relying on you. So graduates, thank you for, being, for allowing me to say a few, mo a few words at, at your last day here at GGC. Congratulations, and don't ever be afraid to make a change.